Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here at the podcast. And um, today we are going to be uh, playing back for you um, by popular demand, believe it or not. Uh, we've had, uh, we were at the AIAG conference earlier, not earlier, actually last week, exactly a week ago, we were at the AIAG conference um, a couple of days after the election. And uh, this took place in Detroit. And uh, we've uh, Andy had a keynote speech that he did uh, during the lunch hour, and uh, we had several people ask me if I was going to um, play this or produce this, publish it uh, for the podcast. I was really not planning on doing that. I was planning on just putting it as a um, clip or, or or a jam, you know, like we do have on on our YouTube channel, but. Several people came up to me, so I changed my mind. <laughs> so, so what I'm doing here for this uh, episode is that I'm going to combine a few things. So we're going to start off with Miriam Kronk. She is the committee chair for AIG that put together this whole town hall for trade and customs. Um, it was a really good event, by the way, and uh, hopefully y'all may take a look and see if you may want to uh, participate next year. But uh, they were um, at 300 uh, attendees, more or less, I think, something like that. So it, it was a really good it was a really good event. Like I said, I, it was very different from what we've been to, like, say, ICPA or NCBFA, um, obvious for obvious reasons, being the automotive industry. But aside from that, we also got to see a few different perspectives on things that we always hear or listen to, like like forced labor, for example, or or uh, any other issues that may uh, CT Pat, that, that's another good example. So anyway, so it was a good event. This episode is going to have, we're going to kick it off with a quick interview we did with uh, Miriam Kronk. Then we're going to transition into Andy's uh, keynote that he had during lunch, which by the way, there was a component, uh, a PowerPoint component to that. Uh, if you're listening or seeing or watching this on YouTube, uh, we We'll have on the notes um, the PowerPoint that you can download in case you want to either A, follow along, or B, just look at all the numbers. The, the, that speech, by the way, is chock full of numbers. We will end this episode with an interview that we did with the CEO of AIAG, Matt. So Matt will be joining us uh, to close the, the episode just to talk a little bit about AIAG, you know, and, and uh, what, what their, what their uh, group works on and advocates for, et cetera. So thank you very much again for, for being part of our audience. And uh, had it not been for several of you that listen into the podcast that attended the, the, the event, I, I don't know if we would have aired this, but, you know, thank you for, for being loyal listeners and, and wanting to listen to this type of content. Um, so we hope you enjoy and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank you. Hey folks, we're uh, here with the AIAG conference. This is Andy Shiles with Simply Trade Podcast, and thanks to MIC Customs, they have sponsored us on uh, being here. And thank goodness for Miriam here; she is taking on, and, and I guess you're the, you're the head chief here for yes. this conference, aren't for you? Today. For the for today, <laughs> for today, yes. It's been you know we have a great audience after several years being here together we have approximately i was told uh close to 300 Good. in our audience yeah. so all from the automotive industry you, we've listened now to director dina amato and dina baker hill and uh we have alex i mean touching all these pressing topics right mm -hmm. and that's important that's oh. important well and the thing is is that uh with this it's it's a nice conference so yeah. this is one of those aiag Automotive Industry Action Group, right? Exactly. I got it it's right. A, it's a mouthful. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you know, me yeah. and my memory is about as long as a turtle's tail here. Yeah. So it's like, all right, so I got that right, folks. Yeah. Um, hey, as far as the folks here, it's it's dedicated predominantly with the automotive industry. Yes, we have OEMs, tiers, <clears throat> mm -hmm. uh, uh, and we have brokers, of course, as being customs of trade, right? We have a little bit of everything. You know, it's such a large industry, and the real thing here in Metro Detroit, we tend to be kind of like recycle, but we all support one another. 
We all know each other, and it's a really dynamic group. Well, it, this is our first uh, visit here, so thank you for inviting us. Thank you for coming. And uh, it, we're looking forward to it. This is a great little conference here, uh, and I say little, 300 people, yeah. but it is, yeah. it's like people are interacting. It's This is one where it's, I don't see the stiff neck kind of a deal. It's like it's very relaxed. Yeah. People yep. are interacting really well. Yep. Yep. The day so. is gorgeous. Oh, day yeah. In November, a day in Metro Detroit. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We're, you know, and again, <coughs> for ourselves just getting together, it's been a while. So mm -hmm. it's just nice to touch base. And with our recent election, you know, some hot pressing topics. We have a phenomenal rock star agenda, yourself included. Oh. So I'm looking forward to listening to you at lunchtime. Let's hold that judgment till after the speech <laughs> and we'll see if it's going to be worthwhile. Well, all said and done, is it's uh, a full day of uh, good speakers, good topics. Yes, yes. Uh, we're looking forward to it. So for uh, the next go around, if somebody is interested in AIAG yeah. and they're in the industry, a uh, supplier, whatever, mm -hmm. why AIAG? I can't get that out. That's okay. <clears throat> it's a mouthful, I it know. Is. But uh, just real quick, um, what is it that you're promoting? Is it just to get together and rub elbows, or what are you doing here? Well, here's the thing. We uh, are the largest trade association in the automotive industry. Mm -hmm. And, of course, situating here in Metro Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, not only supply chain, like in customs and trade. I have a colleague who handles, you know, finished vehicles, electrical vehicles. It's getting, we are the go-to thought mm -hmm. process. We have over 5,000 volunteers, mm -hmm. and it, it's just that to share with industry audience of the happenings that's going on. Um, they create publications, uh, referred to checklists. We do the webinars via all our volunteers. So being a member of AIG or even being a non-member, you know, it's all on a positive note. And it's always expanding, just that. Um, we're global, so well, always go. welcome. All right. Yeah. A-I-A-G, what, dot O-R-G? Dot O-R-G. Hey, yep. There you go. If you're interested, <laughs> check it out. With that, we're going to turn it back over. Hope you all have a great day. Bye, everyone. Fixing to move into a whole new realm um, of things. So one of the things, uh, how many of you want to see the 232 tariffs pull up and get rid of those aluminum and steel tariffs? Yeah, it's kind of mixed, whatever. They're in there. Well, and then you got the 301s, you get all this kind of stuff. The one thing that I'm going to talk to you about is, as far as, in, from my opinion now, and understand this, I'm dumb as a box of rocks, so I have to look and break things down into more common sense terms. I'm going to give you some facts that I've looked at. I'm hoping that it will be uh, well received here, because when we talk about it, I do not believe that U.S. goods are treated fairly abroad. Now I'm talking U.S. manufactured goods. With that, how easy is it to take a U.S. manufactured item, we'll say vehicles, and send it to India? I did that. Yeah, yeah there's some, like, and in, importing a U.S. manufactured vehicle into India or Japan. And how about Germany? Please. A little easier. Well, that's some of the things that I'm looking at. But yet, if you take any of their vehicles and you bring them into the U.S., yeah, there's some bureaucracy. There's no question. But by far, it is much easier, isn't it not? So let's let's talk about it a little bit. As far as the, I got to put on my. I'm, I'll tell you what. Getting old sucks eggs, doesn't it? <laughs> so I'm going to put this back in here for a minute. <laughs> Okay, so uh, as far as uh, the, the first uh, slide here, I was talking about, if you're looking and following on the, uh, on the app, it's just talking about the amount of trade. The amount of trade is even just five years has grown significantly. I mean, we're talking billions and billions goes in there, but the last couple of years have been kind of uh, staggering in the overall things. Uh, exports are beginning to show some improvement, but in 2022, we had one volume, one uh, level of, uh, of trade, and then 23, actually, there was a depression, if you want to, or recession, whatever you want to call it, in the, uh, in the uh, international logistics and, and trade and, and whatnot. So volumes actually dropped 
uh, during that time frame. Um, but in overall trade, in 22, we had $7 trillion in total trade, imports and exports added together. Six point nine trillion in twenty three, and now it's so uh, it's estimated to be seven point two trillion here in twenty four. Now that could have been some factors in there. You remember the Panama Canal with the drought that impeded um, frequencies of ships. The uh, threat of uh, by the longshoremen on the western region that had uh, an impact on how. Quickly, some of the supplies or all the goods and different products came through. So in looking at it overall, though, as far as the trade, we have the trade deficit. I'm going to jump forward here because as far as uh, there's a bar graph, and this goes easier if it was projected, but it's, uh, you know, 3.9 trillion is what we're in, uh, importing versus 3 trillion in uh, 2022. 3.8 trillion drops on imports down to, uh, and, and 3 trillion again on exports. Our exports, though, it just seems to be 3 trillion. We can't seem to go any higher, any lower. Gets a little bit better, maybe, and, and all of that. All right. But talking about trade deficits, regardless if we have a great year or, or a bad year economically, our trade deficit seems to be. It sucks wind. I'll just tell you. What does a trade deficit mean? Trade deficit means we're importing more than we export. Now, imports are not bad, but I'll say this. I don't want to sacrifice getting cheap imports at the expense of U.S. exports. What do I mean by that? U.S. exports, we still have to compete on the global market Price, quality, cycle times, um, you know, obviously customer service as far as things go out there and all of that, just like everybody else does. Everybody seems to want to have access to the U.S. market. But when we turn around and want to reciprocate, there seems to be either tariffs on our goods or non-tariff trade barriers. And that's what we get into. So with the deficit trade deficit, that is. Um, here's one thing. Who do you think leads the effort? Uh, which country do we have the largest trade deficit with? I'm not sure everybody's about to shout it at the same time, but what? China. Good point. <laughs> the one thing that I will say, our trade uh, deficit right now is $785 billion. That means we are importing $780 billion more than we're exporting. Okay. China accounts for 23% of that one country, 23%. But do you want to know if the 301 tariffs and I will quite frankly say I think the Uyghur um, Forced Labor Prevention Act probably has an effect on it. What do you think that their, uh, their account of the trade deficit was in 2016? Now, if you cheat, you're going to look at the short, uh, the the the, uh, the presentation. Forty-seven percent. So, as far as what I'm getting at is that there was a focus on this, and what? Why would we use additional tariffs on somebody? You're trying. The objective is to use that as a tool to try and change the behavior of a country. Right, and hopefully, or you know, the influence of stop using slave labor. That's what it boils down to, right? Well, the other thing is, is also talking about fair trade. Um, when when I say free trade, everybody wants free trade. Well, the general assumption is, if you say free trade, oh, it's duty free. Yeah. Well, that's an aspect of it. I mean, but it's also having free access to the market. How many of you know about the World Trade Organization, WTO? All right. With the WTO, the concept is to be a member of the WTO, you're supposed to be opening up your markets, looking at reducing tariffs, but also opening your markets to other countries. I forget the year, but I know both China and Russia were added to the WTO. 
How many of you believe Russia has, now I know there's a problem with the war with Russia, I'm not, but a while back, how many of you believe that Russia had an open market? Not really. That was an extremely difficult country to get into. The same thing with China. How many of you believe that China has opened up their market? And yet they're a member of the WTO. They're supposed to be open. Not just a U.S. thing. This is all countries. China's playing hardball with everybody. And you know what? They're China first. Okay. But as we're dealing with that, that's something to give some thought to. Here's my objective as I'm going through this. I'm not trying to convince you that we should or should not be taking action regarding a certain country or certain policies or anything like that. What I'm hoping to do is stimulate your thought so that when it comes to your strategic development of your regulatory and industry affairs and government affairs, that you're gonna look at things holistically. I come back to the aluminum and steel tariffs. That's a big deal in the automotive industry. And it would make things a lot easier if we didn't have to worry about that. However, instead of just focusing on that specifically, if we looked at the situation holistically and see if we can influence stimulating trade for U.S. companies in this particular case, both ways you would have a greater shot at getting those tariffs removed on the aluminum and steel where I'm going, is agriculture or fashion industry or whatever else has nothing to do necessarily directly with your industry, but that's where I'm going. So that's what my objective is, is to get you to thinking about this. So talking about the trade deficit again, um, Mexico now is at, accounts for 12.8% up from 8.9% in the trade deficit in 2016. What does that mean? Well, gee, our trade with China actually has been reduced. We were doing about $600 billion in trade, total trade with China um, in 2016. We're at 300, it looks like 369 billion. So people are moving away from China as far as total trade and things of that nature, but they're going to other places. So let's pick it up. Again, still, I don't want to go across and say imports are bad, and a trade deficit necessarily doesn't mean it's totally bad, because I'm going to get to the size of our economy in a minute. But it has to come into play here and look at it. But here's one of the other things. Vietnam now has come out of nowhere, and they're at 8.5% of the trade deficit. Now, their economy is not even in the top 15. And yet they are, what, number one, two, three, third, uh, third largest in the uh, deficit, not counting the European Union as a whole. Germany, their trade deficit accounts for 7.1%. Uh, it actually has shrunk since 2016. They used to be 8%. Well, all this trade deficit, all I'm getting at is getting you to think about it. So, talk about economies. How big is the U.S. economy? 47, 32. 27 million. It's the U.S. economy? 27 trillion. 27 trillion. He's right on the, you must have looked. No. <laughs> 27 trillion. It is. That's, that's, that's the out. We're the largest economy in the world. China is the second largest. What do you think they are? 20. 20. Any other guesses? They are 17, uh, basically 18 trillion. Okay. So the U.S. 27, China is about 18. Who's the third and fourth largest economies in the world? Just take a guess. You can. Japan and Germany? Germany? Yeah, you're right. Japan and Germany. So their economies are 4.4 in Germany and 4.2 trillion. So stop and think about that. 27 trillion. And the third, 
four trillion. So, I mean, the U.S. and China dwarf the economies of everybody else. Everybody wants access to the largest economy in the world. That's us. Great. Is it not fair to think that we should also be asking for those uh, full access to the second largest economy in the world? It's things of that. That's where I'm going with this. Okay. Now, how many of you are probably familiar with this, but uh, if you were to take a U.S. manufactured vehicle, could be actually a Japan, Japanese vehicle or any other country, and send it to Germany, what would be the duty rate, duty and tax rate for that vehicle? 10%. 10%? And I'll do that. Something about 30? About 30? Yeah, I was talking duties and taxes with that. So 30%. That's pretty valid. What if we took a Mercedes and brought it in here? What's the duty rate on a Mercedes? Well, I didn't see I didn't. Two and a half. What about a pickup truck? Uh, Joe. <laughs> With the seats are Tip for tat here. <laughs> but, I mean, in, in all seriousness, even with all that, that's uh, where we're looking at this. All right, so two and a half percent. So let's just say it's five percent. By the time you add all the ancillary other stuff that you have to put into it. Thirty percent, five percent. Twenty-five percent for that. Pickup. And twenty-five percent for the bigger. But the point being is when you're looking at it as you're trying to deal with that, is it fair? I mean, part of the higher rates come from initially after World War II, Germany was setting those rates high. Why? Because they were trying to, to rebuild their domestic economy and they were trying to protect it. Last time I checked, I think Germany has recovered from World War II, don't you? <laughs> All I'm getting at, folks, is we talk, We need to talk through this kind of stuff. Talking about energy, you talk about you know the automotive, you're talking about fashion and things of that nature. Here's the other thing, though. The total amount of uh, exports by country. Who do you think, just in general, they can export anywhere in the world? Who totals the list of exporting from their country? Germany. Germany's one. China. China. China is the first one. In total dollars now, we're not talking percentage. We're talking total dollars. They are 3.7 trillion is what they export. U.S. is next in total dollars of 3.17 trillion. And then Germany is 2.2 trillion. Again, remember the size of the economies? Germany was 4.4 trillion in total economy, and they're exporting 2.2 trillion. So now this is where we can do apples to apples comparison. The percent of their economy tied to exports. <coughs> Excuse me. The percent. The average. The average, and get this, folks, is 31% of all the economies. 31% of a, a, an economy is tied to exports. But here's what really gets me. The U.S., of the top 15, we export 11.6% of, of our totals. Okay? But then China, they're at 20%, almost 21%. Um, Mexico, their economy is tied to 40, 43% of their uh, economy is tied to exports. But the kicker to me was Germany at 50%. Now, in 2016, Germany's economy was exporting at 38%. They still led the uh, highest as far as uh, exports to their economy. But that's astronomical, folks. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But what does that mean? Half of their economy comes from other people's money and goes back to their country. So that's where it comes into. Now, let's get into China. If we were going to deal with this trade deficit to try and balance that out a little bit, um, the top uh, commodities, electronic, this is from China. This is what we're importing in. Electronic, uh, electronic equipment, if I can see. Sorry. 
machinery, furniture, toys, plastics, things of that nature. Going to China, they're, at, they're buying aircraft and spacecraft parts, vehicles, oil sea, machinery, electronic equipment, medical tech, things of that nature. Part of the thing on this, though, is what to do and what would we uh, look at. The forced uh, labor prevention, obviously that's still kicking in. Intellectual property rights, you don't hear that too much anymore because of the forced labor, but that is, you know, you design something, you go over there and you have them manufacture it, and within a few years there's knockoffs. Is that fair? No. Gee, wait a minute. They're a member of what? WTO. Part of the World Trade Organization is to help protect all that. They are, they're a member, but even the WTO is not holding them accountable, as well as some other countries. So we spent all this time trying to regulate talk and talk, 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 talk. Somebody needs to go with a boot up to somebody's backside and go, wait a minute, right? But that's just one of the things to look at to figure out what should we do. All right, the others, Mexico. Um, we're importing vehicles, electronic equipment, machinery, medical equipment, things of that nature. What do we sell to Mexico? Machinery, electronic equipment, minerals and fuels, um, Vehicles, things of that nature. As far as dealing with a strategy, give this advice. And, you know, development of the USMCA uh, trade agreement. Well, it's time for renewal on some of that. Maybe we need to fine tune some of that. Again, the whole thing too is remember North American content. And you know this. I'm I'm preaching the choir on this one. The North American content has supposed to go on up to seventy five percent. Have I got that right? It went from 60 to 75, I believe. Why is it that we can't say to hit that mark? It would stimulate business in Canada, U.S., and Mexico, and in all three countries. That was the whole idea behind that. And yet, they, somebody's cutting corner this way or that way or whatever. And, of course, the other side is I was talking to somebody. Uh, it was you, Alberto, I think it was you, but we were talking earlier where if somebody sets everything up and qualifies for the USMCA, and next thing you know, somebody then sources, well, I can get this part cheaper from you know China, Malaysia, Vietnam, whatever, and they bring it in, and all of a sudden, the percent content drops. Here's my point with that conversation. It no longer qualifies. It has negative repercussions, but the purchasing sourcing guy is just looked at it and go. Hey, I got bigger, better, faster, cheaper. I've saved a few pennies off of this one part. You just cost us 50% more. Look at things holistically. That's all I'm getting at here. The trade. Over 33 million jobs, probably even more than that, but here's what it boils down to. For every billion dollars in trade, it equates to 10,000 jobs. Okay? So... Remember the percent of our economy tied to exports was 11%. The average of all the top economies is 31%. If we even doubled, that'd be 22%. Let's say we just went to 20% of our economy would um, be tied to um, exports then the number of jobs would be in the millions, probably. The, uh, well, I've got here uh, on 21% would create about 9.9 .9 million or more jobs, over 10 million jobs, probably. Now, is that realistic? Probably not. Going back to our economy, our economy is so massive. 27 trillion. We could be completely self sufficient if we wanted to, but we're not going to because we want cheaper products and things of that nature. That's fine. We consume so much in the US, but I can also tell you we could do so much more if we just all we're asking for is what? A level playing field. There are things that you go into certain countries and all of a sudden there's a new regulation or whatever. How many of you enjoy? Exporting to Brazil. <laughs> I mean, they change the, their stuff like, you know, uh, it's a raffle. It's like, here, oh, here's, we're going to do it. Hit, hit this uh, new regulation and off it comes. 
Um, I'll just also say that we had the 301 tariffs that came in under Trump. We had the 232s that were added uh, and, and uh, accelerated under Trump. People are trying to figure out what's going on. The whole intent, I think, was to try and get some of these folks to the table to try and negotiate something. Whether you were for Trump or not, doesn't matter. The one thing I will say, the Trump era, most compliance people nowadays are at the table at the senior levels. So whether you like them or not, or whether you agreed with them or not, the agenda is you're at the table. So here's your takeaway. We know what happened in his, the four years that Trump was president. Now he's coming back. You think it's going to get busy? I think it's like, you, you, you better strap it down because it's fixing to take off. The exciting thing about that is, in my opinion, regardless of, all right, we're going to put tariffs on everything. You know, as far as it, that's a, that's a negotiation boy. That's saber rattling. We don't need to react. We need to respond. And the question is, with your own company and these trade associations and AIAG especially here, what is your top regulatory affairs agenda? If you want to see some of the the tariffs or the, uh, the, the 232s or any of that kind of stuff removed, we need to look at this holistically and maybe align with other industry groups to try and stimulate trade to say, hey, I want fair trade in Brazil or Japan or Germany or China or whoever else. So we can, you know, we got to compete with them. They may still have a cheaper product, but we have our, the American product. I know some of our American products are very popular in some of the other countries, just like some of the others are in here. It's just one of those things is just looking at it from a standpoint, let's just play fair. And that's all I'm trying to put forward. So with that, I may be dumb as a box of rocks. I just hope that that is just a common sense way of doing it. I'm like a, well, the, the country boy uh, economist here or whatever for right now. Send the sheet. So with that, uh, I'll leave it with you. Thank you. And we are here with the CEO of the organization. Tell folks who, with your name and uh, are you based here in Detroit? Yeah, my name is Matt Pullman, the CEO here at AIG. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Thanks for being part of it. Thanks for speaking to us at, uh, at lunch today. You guys were great. Oh, thank uh, you. It was really nice. Uh, uh, but uh, it, uh, we're AIAG. Uh, we are at our uh, customs uh, uh, workshop that's going on today with a lot of speakers, a lot of tough on forced labor and many other things. So yep. thanks for having us. Well, it, it has been a very good conference. I will say that uh, folks seem to be, it's about 300 folks, which is good. That's a great size because there's a lot of interaction. It's big enough that you can have a, a good conference and then it's small enough that you're making contacts and whatnot. So it's been excellent. It's a tremendous opportunity uh, to get uh, the industry together, especially yes. the customs industry and the automotive space. Mm -hmm. uh, and you come to events like this and, and you look at the, 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 you know, all the folks that are attending and you think all these different companies, but when they're here, you know, they've all, it's incestual. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. There, there's a, everyone knows each other. They're, they're competitors, but they're friends. Yes. Uh, and it's nice. We've had events like this in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a while since we've had one. Last year, we combined it with a show. It was okay. Uh, but to get the focus just on customs, to get the Mexico, Canadian, mm -hmm. and U.S. customs representatives here and speaking, mm -hmm. industry spoke speaking, uh, it's been very good. I hear great things so far about it. Well, it has been uh, the feedback that we have uh, been getting as we've interviewed, uh, interviewed people. I'm, t I'm having a hard It's the end of the day. <laughs> I've talked so much, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, the feedback has been great. Honestly, uh, they're actually learning a lot from uh, the speakers. Um, again, the great networking. The vendors seem to be very pleased. There's a lot of good interaction with vendors. So that's one thing. So I think next year's conference may even grow a little bit. Well, it should. You know, once you get this going, they, t they tend to grow. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our fifth different event this year uh, at AIG. We're in the quality space. We're in the supply chain mm -hmm. space. Uh, chemical compliance, IMDS. Uh, we do things in Mexico and in China. So uh, there's a lot. And as you do these things mm -hmm. and they go over well and mm -hmm. social media is making a big piece now, mm -hmm. as that becomes uh, 
uh, a buzz, uh, you get more people coming back the next year. So it's, I'm very excited about that. So let me ask this. In running a, uh, a trade association like this that is so diverse in the different areas of, if you will, the industry, what's probably been your biggest challenge as you're leading this organization? Well, I've been uh, in the automotive industry for 40 plus years, mm -hmm. uh, and AIG is 42 years old this mm -hmm. year. Um, and uh, we've been primarily known as a quality organization, and mm -hmm. it's started expanding into other areas. Uh, I've been in my role for two and a half years, uh, and my challenge was to, to try to get it out of primarily quality mm -hmm. uh, and uh, put more focus on some of the, the newer uh, EV space, mm -hmm. the sustainability space, uh, and many of the other current industry issues. So if you don't know AIG, uh, we're an industry association uh, our role uh, and our goal uh, is to, to solve industry-related issues and problems with best practices and standards. Uh, we do that uh, uh, by bringing the best in the industry together. We have, uh, we have meetings like we're having right now where people talk about the problems. We listen to what they are. We have steering committees that, that kind of gather what they, are, what they think the topics are. And then we ask... Uh, okay, if we try to solve this, will you give us your subject matter experts? Mm -hmm. And by getting, and we put those people into a room once a week, once a, every other week or once a month, solve that problem. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing right now. Uh, going on in that room right now is a forced labor initiative mm -hmm. that we started a year ago, uh, along you know with compliance and all the stuff that's going on with yep. you know importing importing stuff from other places. Uh, but we're announcing six OEMs have come together with a common approach. We've got four industry IT solutions with a common solution. Uh, and then they're gonna, we're offering that to the industry as a common solution. The OEMs are going to uh, put it out there. And hopefully over time, that best practice will become a standard and get put in uh, you know, their specific requirements. Uh, and that will hopefully, as it, as it goes downstream through the supply chain, hopefully brings a lot of standards, but also brings compliance and helps the industry get better uh, in solving this initiative that is pretty big, uh, which is how do you bring stuff in and know that you're compliant? Well, and that is a challenge there is the, the working groups that you basically are putting together, are there like a government private sector or is it all from your trade association right now? Well, we, you know, AIG is small. We're 50 people. Right. Uh, but we have at any point in time 800 volunteers mm -hmm. uh, and various work groups. So we have, uh, it depends on the, the issue we're trying to solve, but mm -hmm. generally it's OEMs and tiers. Mm -hmm. Could be sub tiers. Okay. Uh, right now, this one included also the, the industry solution providers because you can't solve right. forced labor without having information all the way down to where it comes right. out of the ground. And you need a, there needs to be a solution for that. So that's why we got the industry, but we also involve sometimes universities. Uh, we might involve, uh, we do have relationships with the US Customs, Canada Customs, yeah. Mexico Customs, and depending on what it is, we'll, we'll have them involved in these working groups as well. With that, you know, some of the service providers, the, you know, the, the companies that have AI technology, it's. You know, you've got to know where your supply chains, is, as customs would say, and, you know, tracking it that well. They're finding that out. Now the scenario is, as it's uh, revealing some potential problem areas, it's now trying to say, well, now what do you do with it? And it sounds like you're taking action in that to say, okay, here's how to handle it, especially pulling those OEMs together. Uh, I mean, everyone's got to be compliant. Whoever's bringing it into the country has to prove compliance. Mm -hmm. uh, and right now, I think... In general, it's a, you have to prove the negative because you're assumed if it's coming from certain areas that you're guilty and you have to prove that it's not uh, mm -hmm. from the, the forced labor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not from the forced labor uh, region or, or whatnot. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it's hard. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you have to know. And, mm -hmm. there's a, and it's complicated because it's, uh, it's labor, it's, uh, it's uh, bad actors, it's, uh, it's, it's many different Metal pieces. Mess, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and that was talked about in our, in our uh, re, you know, the, the sessions today. Yep, uh, yep, excellent, excellent. Well, if somebody wants to get uh, involved with AIAG based on what you're looking at here, and it sounds like this is a great organization, which folks, it really is. There's some good folks in it. Um, what are they, who do they need to reach out to or what do they need to do? Well, if you get on AIAG.org, uh, you'll find a, a membership area in there. You can select on that and, and, and reach out. 
uh, and you'll find a way to connect to AIG. We've got a membership group that will contact you and get back to you. Uh, but we've got 5,000, close to 5,000 members. Mm -hmm. we got 38 OEMs. Uh, you know, all the big tiers are part of it, so it's a, it's a great organization. No, excellent. Thank you. If you are in the automotive industry, you are a supplier, whatever, this is an organization. If you're not already involved, you should give serious thought to uh, get involved. But Thanks, Andy. Well Matt, you Thanks, have been Lord. excellent. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Look Appreciate forward it. to listening to you. All right. All right.